investment. Oh my goodness, do we have a program for you. Um, three, three wonderful ladies and one will join us a little later um, who are moms in their own life. I mean, I mean, motherhood is not for, for wimps, okay? <laughs> and um, but I thank God for these ladies who have um, um, uh, agreed to join us for this episode of a special Mother's Day episode to encourage, to um, enhance to to just um, share life, real life, with those who will listen, so that God will get the glory. Amen, amen. So, so let's begin. Uh, we'll start with Tish. <laughs> <laughs> so Tish somehow I knew that was going to happen. Which is so kind to introduce yourself and uh, give us a little bit of background about you. Okay, um, I'm Tish North. I am a wife and a mom of three kids that uh, currently belong to me, but I've been a mother to um, 32 children that have actually lived in, in my home in some capacity. So I've been a mom for a while. Um, I have been married 22 years to my great husband, Rob, and mm -hmm. we had our first child when... I was 21. We were married for about three years and then we had our first kid. So um, that is Lynn and she's 19 now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, and then we'll, we'll just introduce everybody and I'll come back to you, Tish. Okay. And then Mary, Mary, would you introduce yourself? Good morning. I'm Mary and um, I have two children, Corey and Nessie. They're 20 and 22. Um, I was a single mom. Um, I got pregnant with Corey the beginning of my senior year of high school. I was pregnant my entire uh, senior year, had him, and um, pretty much remained a single mom their entire life, um, raising them with my, you know, the, the help of the Lord, and we had a great support system. So um, that's our story. Okay, and we're going to hear more later. And then, Kara, would you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Sure. My name is Kara Withy, and I have four children, three sons and a daughter. Um, I am currently a single mom and uh, work at my kids' school and um, probably love being a mom more than anything else in the world. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, with that, we'll go back to this. And now you tell us, um, share influence of your mother, or you can go with your journey as a mother yourself. Well, for me, both of those questions or testimonies kind of tie into each other. Um, I was really young when my mom died. I was four and she actually was in a car accident mm -hmm. and, and passed away at the age of 22. So that um, obviously altered the course of my life. I lived with my grandmother and um, that was, it wasn't your typical grandma, like bacon cookies and, you know, supportive home. Um, I grew up in an abusive home, very toxic environment. And um, later in life, well, I, as a teenager, I was on my own very early around 13, 14 years old. And then I met Rob. There was a lot that happened in between there. I actually, um, the first time I became a mom was when I was 16. I got pregnant at 16 and I had a miscarriage. And then I met Rob when I was 18. We got married and we've been married for 22 years now. But at 21, it started my journey um, as a mom. And I had Lynn and then... Um, we became foster parents when Lynn was about four years old. 
And um, we've been fostering ever since we've adopted several kids. And all of that ties into like honoring my mom and her memory and wanted to do something positive with my life and take what had happened with me and, um, you know, it not, it not destroy me. It made me stronger. It made, um, it made me want to do better. It made me want to be different and, and provide a home for children that I didn't necessarily have. And a lot of the kids that come in our home, I can relate with all of them in some capacity, whether it's not having parents, whether it's abuse or um, just being through a traumatic experience. So, um, you know, I really enjoy being a mom. And I've had, even though my mom died when I was four and I missed out on, on having her influence in my life, there's been a lot of other women um, in my life that have influenced me. And, and honestly, all, all three of you ladies that are here with me have influenced me in my motherhood. And, and I spent some time in an orphanage and group homes and, um, you know, different, uh, types of homes. I was in foster care as well. So I've had a lot of moms, uh, influence me and and kind of help mold me and and I kind of joke sometimes with our kids that come in our home I tell them you know God loved you so much that he 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 wanted you to have more than one mom you know and I often kind of pick it myself that I was so hard-headed God knew I needed you know like 20 moms <laughs> so <laughs> but I've had a lot of different women that have poured into my life in one way or another, you know, I didn't learn how to cook from my grandmother, my mother, I learned how to cook from, you know, my best friend, Angie, and Robert's mom. And, you know, so I've had a lot of very influential, uh, godly women in my life. And I'm very grateful for that, because all of those women have been a part of the puzzle of Tish, you know, and putting it all together. And, um, you know, that kind of, I'm, I'm passing that down now to my children. So. Amen. Wow. Wow. Some of those things you said, I didn't know about you. Oh, oh yeah. Sure there's lots. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank, thank you for sharing. Okay. We have more questions later. Kira, you're next. Whew. Well, I think I'll start off by talking a little bit about my mom if that's okay. I was thinking uh, what Tish said is exactly right, that the uh, journey, I've thought a lot about this since being asked to do this, the journey of being a daughter and being a mom are so intricately woven together that it's almost hard to say where one ends and one begins. And so, you know, I owe a lot to my mom. I grew up the daughter of a single mom. Um, my father left when I was eight years old. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I think my childhood was sort of dr drowned in that flood of grief and anger and bitterness that really surrounded my parents' divorce. They divorced in 1978. And believe it or not, back then, that was still even a bit of a stigma. I was yes. one of two kids in my class of about 85 kids who had divorced parents. So there was still a stigma around divorce at that time. And the truth is my mom wasn't fully equipped because really no woman is fully right. equipped to be both mom and dad to her daughters. Um, she didn't have a college degree. She didn't live near family. And so I think she was probably just overwhelmed with the sheer, the, the daunting task of just providing a home and a life and some semblance of stability uh, for me and my sister. And in some ways, I think the softer sides of my mom were just lost in that. Um, she provided well, but there was not a lot left over by way of guidance um, or nurture. And so I think if I had to pick probably the two words to describe, you know, my young childhood, what kind of defined me as a young girl, it would probably be anger and loneliness. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, I think the divorce left me with those feelings. I, I can remember thinking as a child that the really the hard part about divorce was that not only did I lose my dad, I also lost my mom in every way that really mattered, right? I lost the mom parts of her because she was so busy being, you know, the tyranny of the urgent. She was so busy trying to be the dad. Mm -hmm. But, you know, despite all that, as I've been pondering these things, despite all of that, you know, my mom did one thing profoundly right. And that is that every Sunday morning, she would get up and she would take her two daughters and put us in her old Buick and drive us to the donut shop and then take us to church. And mm -hmm. so I had the privilege of growing up under sound biblical instruction mm -hmm. and with good godly um, counsel. And mm -hmm. so the truth is she ultimately ended up doing what every Christian parent is called to do. And she put my hand in the hand of the Lord Jesus. She mm -hmm raised me in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And it may mm -hmm. sound strange to say this, but in a way, ultimately she gave me something better than herself because mm -hmm. she gave me Jesus. She gave me him. And I, you know, I can remember the day when I actually had that thought for the first time, I was actually uh, pondering Psalm 68, five, where it says, you know, a father to the fatherless, a defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. And I remember realizing all of a sudden that I, it was such a gift to be fatherless, that I had this profound, unique standing with God because he has promised now to take me up, take up my cause in a totally unique um, and, and different way. And so I actually uh, remember thinking that I was, I was grateful to be without an earthly father because now God was my father very tangibly. So oddly enough, I think although the, the divorce, my parents' divorce, it robbed me in some ways, it also changed the trajectory of my mom's life. And so ultimately it changed the trajectory of my life mm -hmm. um, and uh, thrust, kind of thrust our broken little family into the arms of Christ. Mm -hmm. which is of course the best place to be. And so what Satan really intended for evil, God intended for good. And I guess if I had to say one thing to my mom, it would just be, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the one thing I could not have lived without. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's powerful. And that's like, it's kind of painful, you know, because, you know, we hear the sadness of people's experience, but if we can put it in the hands of the Lord, you're right. God can use, like they, we say, um, everything work together for the good of those who love the Lord and call according to his purpose. So you found good in that? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Woo! Mm. Let me go ahead. Next one, Mary. Mary, would you please share with us? Uh, so Thank you. Um, um, just to share a little bit, my parents also got divorced when I was about seven years old and um, we went from a family that sat at the table and had meals together to, um, you know, just we were at that time when they were married, a, a normal middle class family, you know, nice little house backyard. And once my parents got divorced, we moved, um, my mom, my brother, and myself moved back down to the Lower East Side of town. And, but, you know, suddenly we were poor and, and there wasn't there, everything that, you know, the life I knew was kind of gone. And um, so we grew up, you know, after that, um, just, you know, I would say in a broken home, um, but um, my mom, I don't think she ever fully recovered from the divorce as far as uh, bitterness, anger, whatnot. Um, so we um, grew up very quickly, um, had, had to go, so I had my first job when I was 12. If there was things I needed, I just mm -hmm. had to work and babysit or whatever it was and, and per, learn to provide for myself. And um, I was, by the time I was 16, I wasn't living with my parents and um, was out on my own uh, when I was um, 17. But no, right when I had turned 18, um, my senior year, I was out on my own, living on my own. And um, I think just um, not having that nurturing relationship with my mother, you know, we looked for love. And at the time, I wasn't a Christian. Um, 
so we look for love in in the world and and I think that's how I ended up you know um you know pregnant at at 18 you know um you know with with a, a guy I went to school with we had dated since I was 15 and I always say it was high school sweethearts that wasn't so sweet you know <laughs> so um so I found myself you know um just having to grow up very quickly and um you know, having to, at that time, build a foundation for my son, you know, who I had two weeks after my graduation. And um, one thing I, I am thankful for is that I did grow up with a good work ethic. So that was one thing that um, by the time I was a senior in high school, I went to a Votech high school. So I was going to school half a day and working after that. So I was able to provide, you know, for myself to have a home and whatnot, um, even though it wasn't in a good area and I <laughs> would not want to go back there. I'm thankful for where uh, God has delivered me or what he's delivered me from. But um, so just having to grow up so quickly um, and make ends meet and struggle and really at that time, again, not being a Christian, just trying to figure out how to be a mom more so on my own and um, so when my children were six and eight, um, I decided to move out of, we had to get out of there. Um, even though I wasn't a Christian at the time, there was, I just had a moment where I knew God was saying, you, you need to go, you know, it's time to get out of here. And um, almost like, you know, break those generational curses for your kids. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so. oh, no worries. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's what we want. Take your time. We are on no time constraints just yet, but <laughs> go ahead. Do what you need to do. So, so, um, so I moved, you know, down here. I knew one person at the time, but, um, I had, um, I had, I, I did become a Christian shortly before I moved here. And I had a friend who told me when you move, you find a church that preaches the gospel. So I found my church before I even found a home to live in here. Wow. So, um, and that was really just an act of God. I had been at my job back home by this point, 10 years. And I said, I've got to go. And nobody could understand why I had to go. And there was a lot of anger. And my mother was very angry, you know, with me again, um, instead of coming in and being that supportive mom that I needed, it was, um, it was almost turning against me, you know, again, nobody could understand. Um, but, but I knew, you know, <laughs> and then we got here and, um, we got into the church and, um, and that's where those kids were raised was in the church. So, um, so just like Tish as well. And, um, Kara, I really appreciate you saying that your mom gave you gave you that one thing that you couldn't live without. Um, we grew up without the Lord and my kids, um, Corey accepted the Lord at five and Nezzy accepted the Lord at seven. And, um, and they beat the odds, you know, uh, they haven't seen their father in over 14 years. He was absent. Um, so, but just like, you know, Tish had many mothers. I had many, many women in the church. And Mrs. Adams, you know, you played a, 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 a huge role in Nessie's life, you know, Mr. Adams and Corey's life. And God will place people, you know, to, to, um, to, to fill those gaps, if you will. And uh, they're even better because they're mm -hmm. godly people. And so um, my motherhood, my journey, it, although it started out, so rough and there were so many days I didn't know where's the next meal coming from you know what how are we going to pay the bills um and uh but God always always provided and my kids always saw that and no matter what uh we had peace in the home because we had Christ in our home and um when you can give your children peace and give them that boy it's just something that um <laughs> Well, I wish I had it while I was growing up, you know, I can appreciate it far more, you know, and, um, and I, I, 
I give all the glory to God because it wasn't me and my doing, you know, um, God used me and he, 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 he gave me those two children and appointed me and their mother, but, um, really God is, gets all the glory for, for everything. He met every need that we had. He met wants, um, um, had to work a couple jobs, but they were able to go to a good school, you know, and, and he just provided, and there wasn't one area where he was absent, you know, and, um, for me, you know, and every mom, we, we wear all these hats and, mm -hmm. um, and we, we feel like we have to carry all these burdens and we mm -hmm. and, and nothing's enough and are we being good enough and we scrutinize ourselves and, and, um, but my, my favorite verse, you know, um, has always been first Peter five, seven, casting all your cares upon him for he careth for you because, we carry it and we carry it and we carry it, you know, to the point where we're just broken down and we can't go anymore. And God just says, give it to me, you know, cast your cares to me. I want to carry your burdens for you. We're, we weren't meant to do that, you know? And um, so I'm just thankful. I'm so thankful for, for the journey and to look back and think now, um, I, you know, I'm still not very close with my mom. I've got to go up north next week and handle some things for her but you know trying to accept that she probably did the best that she could at that time and then not knowing the lord you have to take that into consideration as well um so that's a little bit of my journey sorry for being emotional when you see like your journey and see where he's taking you from and at the time you don't know if you're going to make it or not and now that both children are grown they're married They've got good, you know, good things going on. My son's in the military and is married to a Marine, you know, and you're like, wow, some days I didn't think we'd get through the teenage years, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and here we are. And it's such a blessing to be in this season of motherhood. Um, such wow. a blessing. So, wow. So you think about the terrible twos, but terrible teens, but look what God can do with yeah. it. Make it terrific with his hand is upon it. Um, I want to share a little bit about my story, have some time, and then after I've completed, hopefully Christina will join us, but if not, then we can move to an area where we can um, um, share some practical things for ladies, um, mothers, who may be looking for some answers specifically, you know, so whatever the Lord leads on your heart to um, share some tangible, okay, um, I think words of wisdom, I guess, you know, so, um, of course, I, I grew up um, in Washington, D.C., in the hood, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and my mom, my mom was, um, uh, the mom and dad both married, yes, married, and um, they had seven children, okay? Seven. And I was the oldest of the seven. Um, and, um, but my mom, she was, a, she was a strong disciplinarian, and my dad had a great work ethic. He worked two two jobs. One was a cab drive, cab driving cab and um, construction. Um, and he was gone a lot. He worked a lot, right? But my mom was a stay home mom, so she can keep an eye on the kids, right? And I'm glad she did. I'm glad she did. She stayed home as long as she could. And um, but it was rough in our neighborhood. And her her one thing she said, "Do not go out this yard." <laughs> right because all the surrounding areas was you know was nothing good there really because we were in the midst of drug abuse and all kinds of things that happened in the inner city um and she wanted to keep us safe um when she did have a job a little job um, um part-time job so um and at the time she was a, she was a person of, of the word she went to church and she took us to church we didn't have transportation so we walked to church 14 blocks right on a sunday on a wednesday and friday so um, but she did the best she could. Um, um, she graduated from high school and she wanted the best for her children. So um, she mined the, the station. She was home. Um, but she, that mother of mine, she was, mom said, jump. And we said, hi, hi, mom. <laughs> but she had to keep everybody in control um, because it was a lot to, 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 to raise seven kids and stay sane. So she had some kind of sometimes mental issues, um, but because of her faith in the Lord, um, it, it kept most of us on the right track. So, um, so she was very influential 
um, showing me how to seek God. She taught us um, um, the Lord's Prayer. Um, she taught us how to fast. Mm -hmm. I guess it was um, sometimes voluntary. Sometimes we didn't have any food, so we fast anyway. <laughs> So, um, so, so we were fasting and she would take us to church, like I said, and um, we would have all night prayer service on the Friday. She said, Diane, you come to church with me and we're going to fast. And so bring your pillow and your blanket. <laughs> Not for her, for me. Okay. <laughs> um, to, to, it was like, a, a, you know, you have a, a sleepover in the church. So um, that was an inheritance that we got from my mom, my dad. On the other, he was an unsaved person. So the influence of that was to teach me, was teaching us how to be persistent with an unsaved person, but to, to fight that battle in prayer. Mm -hmm. 25 years she prayed for him. That was the thing that stands out with me. She, she had that tenacity. She had the unwavering faith that God would eventually um, save her husband. It wasn't, I mean, there were infidelity. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, but she chose to stay there. And it was amazing to watch all that. But um, through the prayers and her faithfulness, my father eventually became a believer in his older older age. And, and because he decided not to leave, um, he kept that covering. And it's huge when, when the father would be there to cover, to protect the children from the, 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 the enemies encroaching upon them at all various levels uh, to tear them away from family, to tear them away from Christ or whatever. But that father brings the glory in because he didn't leave, even though he was a, you know, he wasn't in faith, the Lord honored that covering, you know what I'm saying? So I, I just want to thank God for my mom for being that influential to take some of those, um, um, those unsavory moments between the relationship between she and my dad. Mm -hmm. There was one story I remember, they were arguing and they left the house, my mom and dad. And I remember my dad walking behind my mom and me and my mom holding hands and walking to my, um, going to my aunt's house because it was such um, um, altercation. And my mom left instead of standing in the fight. You know, they, she, she wouldn't believe in the fight. She didn't believe in fighting. <laughs> that was your fist. On your, on your knees. So she left and I was walking at night through those streets with my mom. And um, my, my dad eventually, he saw that we went to the aunt's house and we got there safely. And then he turned around and went home and we made out our bed there that night to stay away from the violence that could have happened in my home. So, so there were some tough times, but um, we were able to weather the storm because because of Christ, right? And so um, so years later, she's gone now to be with Jesus, but I just want to thank God for my mom and those um, memories of a strong woman of God. So, um, so we can breathe and um, giving God praise. Let me just thank him right now. Okay, come on, y'all. <laughs> praise for his goodness, amen.